I want to see ignition RPM. This cool little baby is going to help me to do that. All right, everybody, welcome back to Just Plain Crazy. I am Brennan. Thanks for joining me again here for another episode down in the lair. And as I said in my intro from rclightsystems.com, this little RPM telemetry converter is going to help me get engine RPM out of my EME 60 and this zero. So if you have a gas engine that has a ignition module that has an extra spark output wire, you can go ahead and tap this into there. Now, what this is going to give you the ability to do on my Jetty DS12 is to see engine RPM. And you're like, oh, Brendan, why do I need engine RPM? I don't care. It either runs or it doesn't. Well, you're right. But if you want to do some extra fine tuning, um, this way it helps to keep you out and away from the prop so you're not using a tack like one of these you can actually tune it with this thing if you're one of the guys that likes to set an alarm for an rpm that may be starting to get too low the engine's starting to die um you know that's an avenue for you as well but what i've typically done in this is buy the extra jetty sensor and have a way to either find a way to mount that optical sensor or the magnetic or the hall effect device type and it could be a little cumbersome at times but on this eme 60 this is a great little tool to get that engine rpm and that's what we're going to be installing should be simple straightforward let's get to it all right guys let's go ahead and strip off uh the front of this engine so we can access where the sensor goes And I guess the only reason that I'm doing this is simply because mine, the pickup, my ignition pickup is mounted outside the firewall out here, which is always um, best that you separate that ignition from inside near the receiver. You want some separation space just in case anything ever breaks down, you get any interference um, that the stuff's separated and out here. Now, before I fully take this out, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to index all this stuff so I don't have to mess around going back together. I'm just going to mark it all with a Sharpie. I know where everything goes. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, remove the cap. Now off of this ignition box, you're gonna see you have that tack output. You have your input, which is running off of your magnet through your magnetic pickup here through your um, sensor. And that will go up into uh, this other lead in here. And then you have your third one, which will come around and that is the power on and off to the ignition module. So this is the one that we are going to plug in the RPM sensor into. Now, typically, especially with Jetty, you would need an RPM Hall sensor, Hall effect sensor, or you can get the optical one, which would have to see the prop. So what you would typically do with the Jetty here is you would have to mount another sensor of theirs out here to pick up that magnet or mount the magnet yourself somewhere in here. And as I said before, that can be kind of cumbersome with this device from rclightsystems.com. You can just go ahead and take that. We're going to plug that into here and we're going to run it through into our um, channel expander right there. And that is our telemetry module for our jetty. So let's go ahead um, and get that installed. And you could see I've already pre-fished a wire in through there to make that pretty simple to do. Now, before we install our RPM pickup device that's going to be used on our TAC output of our ignition module, we want to make sure that we have it talking on the right protocol and that it's updated. So to do that, you need obviously your pickup, you're going to need your uh, USB bootloader dongle, you're going to need the bootloader software that you can get off of rclightsystems.com, and we're going to go ahead and select that and open it up. We're going to go ahead and plug in our dongle. We're going to select uh, a communication port to open, and I've only ever gotten one in my case. You're going to select open. 
And now you can go ahead and plug in the um, long side. And get you guys positioned here and match up the colors. Once it's plugged in, you should see the light turn green. You should see that you have your RPM sensor listed up here. You can update firmware if it gives you that option here. And then we can go into manage. Now from here, you can go ahead and select whatever protocol you have, whether it's EX bus, uh, Jetty EX, S bus, SRL X2 for spectrum, whatever. So we're gonna go into manage. And here I wanna make sure that it is set to Jetty EXT and not EX bus. So Jetty EXT is uh, Jetty sensor. So that way I can run it right into my four channel uh, sensor divider and we would hit close. And if you change it, so if we go in, I'll give you an example. So let's just say I wanted EX bus, you'll hit close. And then yes, I want to save that configuration. Um, otherwise we got to change it back. So we're going to go back in here. We're going to go Jetty EXT. We're going to go to close. Configuration has been changed. So we're gonna do yes. Now, you're gonna go ahead and go in now to close. And now you can disconnect your RPM sensor and your dongle, we're ready for install. Now, when you go to install your RPM sensor, you wanna make sure that the um, short lead goes to your ignition module or your, your spark output. Make sure that we got everything lined up here the right way. And for me, I'm actually going to use a connector lock just to make sure that we have everything here held nicely. And now I have a string on mine. So I can fish this through and connect it into my channel expander for my radio system. And that's because I have temp sensors, this sensor, a um, battery capacity used out of the receiver packs. All those things are going into my jetty, so we needed the channel expander. And now we're going to go ahead and pull that through. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll get a zip tie on there and then we're going to start getting the cowling put back on. All right, our zip tie is on. So while we're here and the cowling is off, as we go back together, this auto start, you need to put some lubrication on these teeth every so often uh, in order to keep this thing working well. So what I use here is automotive bearing assembly lube. And what this does is it's really thick. It doesn't fling doesn't fly all over the place, but still has very, very good lubrication qualities. So it's perfect to go ahead and smear around on the teeth of this unit to keep it running straight because this thing with the auto start is absolutely amazing. I love it. So we want to keep this thing operating nice for as long as we can. Now, one of the other things to do if you guys don't do it, anytime you take off the spark plug boot to make it easy to get off, you add a little bit, little bit of dielectric automotive compound. This is an electrical isolator. It'll prevent this rubber from adhering to the spark plug, but it also helps to prevent um, voltage leaks through there that help lead to interference. But I like it mainly because it makes it easier to get off. So every time I pull that plug off and I'm gonna go back on with it, I make sure I use that stuff.
All right, guys, we got it outside. We got our jetty telemetry ready. Let's get this thing fired up. All right, guys, we have her setting on the stand here. All we're doing is just going to start it up for a quick second, show you the RPM right there on our telemetry. Let's get the ignition on and get the auto start fired up. Alright guys, and there you have it. That was the RPM sensor from rclightsystems.com. Taking advantage again, whether you're JR, Futaba, Spectrum, Jetty, whatever, if you run a, a gas engine that has an ignition module with that third wire output, go ahead and take advantage of that super cool feature. Obviously, you need a radio and receiver that's telemetry capable in order to do that. So, if you're interested in that, the Vario sensor like I'm currently putting in the Super Decathlon build, or potentially like I did in the Draco video right there, I converted that thing off of my uh, Spectrum DX9 to Jetty, but I still wanted the telemetry in reverse out of the Avian. They can do that for you with their telemetry module. So lots of cool different options. Check them on out over at www.rclightsystems.com. There's also a link down in the description below. With that being said, it's Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You're just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. Smash that thumbs up for us. It helps out the channel a lot. If you're going to hit the thumbs down, do that thing twice. Shamelessly, we always ask you to like, share, subscribe as we do in all of our videos. Um, I wish you guys would check us out also over on Facebook and Instagram on the official Just Playing Crazy pages and smash that thumbs up there as well. So anyway, uh, that wraps up this episode. Until I see you guys next time, I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.